वी आर हियर इन पूना एंड अभी सब लोगों ने कॉफी वॉफी पिया है ना मतलब आवाज निकलेगा ना ठीक है और दिस नॉट वर्किंग ओके हु ऑल नोज दिस इन पुणे हु ऑल नोज वॉट द कॉन्टेक्स्ट ऑफ दिस इज इन पुणे और राइट हु ऑल इन द ऑडियंस आर क्लूलेस अबाउट वॉट दिस शीट इज और राइट सो द पीपल हु नो अबाउट इट आई नीड यू हेल्प टू गेट एवरी वन एल्स अक्वेंटेड विथ हाउ थिंग्स रोल इन पुणे ओके सो आई गोट से दैट एंड यू गोट टू रिस्पॉन्ड विथ जे एस फूचा ठीक है आवाज कुणाचा माझ कुणाचा आवाज कुणाचा माझ कुणाचा अरे आवाज कुणाचा रे जे एस फूचा रे ठीक आहे सो ऑल राईट सो i i i i thought you you guys had eaten uh, but it didn't happen it seems anyway uh is this on now yeah, yeah. all right theek okay. hai so uh awaaz kuna cha real world challenges cha theek hai so uh this talk is about a real world challenge that i encountered and uh, i'm going to share uh, my approach to attempting to solve that problem i don't know if i'd be able to solve it um uh again another question who all have gone through the outline of my talk uh, on on jsu's website only then okay all right okay so um who all are anticipating a lot of serverless and react talk in this uh, in this session nobody i'm happy okay so um all right so no hugs for the people who are anticipating serverless this is for the people who are looking forward to knowing about langdon and this is for the people who have no clue about what this is about in this chill all right uh, my name is nikhil lanjivar i'm a full stack developer i also identify as a conservationist i'm an independent consultant from nagpur small towner saktonda and um, i am comfortable with profanity filters that's my twitter handle and github handle all right um i'm going to start with a case study and action research uh, just to share what this is about um by sharing some learnings from my from the field uh, so i i spent the last one year backpacking i, I spent the last two years backpacking every month uh, to different locations in india and uh, the last one year i have been away from tech and i spent my time in a lot of tribal locations a lot of remote locations where uh, in some places there's not even electricity right now it's, it's been 72 years to independence but they don't have electricity yet um So uh I come from Nagpur uh, other than oranges it's also known for tigers uh it's the tiger capital uh the reason why it's a tiger capital because it connects uh, uh 13 of the tiger reserves out of 39 tiger reserves in India uh so we've got a lot of forests and we've got a lot of natural habitat we've got a lot of tigers and uh, not just tigers but everything else that falls in the food chain um the current and ongoing challenges are um, uh, pretty evident uh, avni happened so we all know that man animal conflict is the hot topic right now uh, every now and then we see that a tiger is being shot uh, there's a lot of habitat destruction and poaching that is happening illegal hunting um and habitat destruction like a lot of wood cutting is happening uh, up, at the same time the people who live in the forests they are being rehabilitated and they don't want to move unless they get something uh at the same time when they move the city folks are not happy with it uh because there's urban migration that happens at the same time there's a lot of conflict between the forest staff and the locals uh mass tourism is another uh, evil that that has come up because there's a lot of cemented resorts that have come which has which have also led to habitat destruction um and at the same time because we have been conserving tigers now we have a new problem to face because now there are more tigers but there's nothing to feed on so there there's no deer and sambar which the tiger can eat so that's why the tiger has started hunting cows okay so this is the context of the challenges that i observed in one of the uh, areas that i have been working on now um uh, there's something called biosocial approach that i'll uh, put some context about um uh, again another disclaimer uh, this talk is half non tech and half tech so just be with me like i i may not talk about anything code for some time 
um so um i i have my background in industrial psychology i have built a company uh, that that worked on industrial psychology and applied it for human resources so um uh, so there's a concept in bio, uh, in psychology called biosocial approach what it says is uh, behavioral personality disorders or borderline personality disorders bpd uh, are mostly driven not just by emotional vulnerabilities but also because of an invalidating environment for example aapko bolega ki tu chutiya hai so you will be emotionally insecure and you will try to defend yourself yeah so this is something which a biosocial approach talks about and addresses that if you want to solve a borderline personality disorder you just have to you, you don't only work on emotional security but you also create a validating environment around it so it needs to be a conducive environment ki aap bacche ko bolte rahoge ki bhai tum pad kyun nahi rahe ho tum to aise hi ho tum fail ho jaoge tum to zindagi mein kuch nahi ukad paoge so the child is going to be emotionally insecure and violent theek hai so this is clear now what a biosocial approach says is the is what i just mentioned that if the current state is emotionally vulnerable and an invalidating environment exists we need to intervene to work on both aspects of it and then achieve our results which can be stability which can be prosperity or abundance cool um the other thing that i want to focus on is ethnic knowledge um by ethnic knowledge i mean that a particular section of people or it can be majority minority we, do, we won't get into that but a particular group of people who align with a particular cultural idea um have some knowledge that exists within that group and that knowledge exists in these forms it exists in the form of songs poems compositions recipes uh, rituals customs stories festivals like whatever you can read it uh so agricultural practices housing clothing handlooms handicrafts it it's it's a lot many things so if we take a group of software developers as an ethnic group let's say if we were a culture so we would have our things documented somewhere in some format and we would have that knowledge represented in some way like the, when when we talk here at a conference the talk is is a way of representation of that knowledge now when we sit to study that knowledge so when we study music it's called musicology when we study food it's called gastronomy when we study ecology or the natural habitat it's called ecology and when we put people in it when we when we study it in the context of ethnic cultures we introduce ethnography in it so lot of jargon you don't need to remember all of it all of these uh concepts and all of the, this knowledge is represented using a medium which is via languages so the way we express our concept using code using javascript or ruby so these are our languages so i mean somebody just asked me what all languages do you work on so now i have a another conflict that i whether i talk about the natural spoken languages or do i talk about javascript or ruby so um so coming back to a biosocial approach um what we did uh, in melghat tiger reserve was um uh, we identified the needs of of the local people and uh, we said uh, let us address the emotional security aspect and also create a validating environment let's not tell them that we are tourists and we are coming here and we want western toilets we or we want to eat paneer butter masala here so let just tell us what is your lifestyle and let us create a tourism product around it so instead of invalidating your existence we'll create something that fulfills your needs and it also fulfills the need of tourism so um, i have also been an amateur astronomer since 97 so uh, i designed a, a a tourism product around night sky conservation so i've been consulting with pens tiger reserve and melgar tiger reserve for about 5 years now uh, we got them to procure motorized telescopes uh, to be put inside the tiger reserve where there's no light pollution so uh, the image on the uh, on the left uh, or the or the right that you see that's a real image that has been taken from melgar tiger reserve during our uh, programs so on a new moon night you can actually see each other in starlight it's that bright um so those many stars and uh, there are some more pictures that i have so what this happened what this did was we identified the needs of tourists so tourists are going for jungle safaris they're clicking pictures and they're putting up a facebook profile picture so we gave them a facebook profile picture with the stars and they were happy and they wanted to pay for it on the other hand we conducted this session at night so the nocturnal tourism night time safaris did not need to happen and if if you don't don't know the 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 wildlife in jungles ventures out in night time 
it's nocturnal wildlife so if you if you speed through the roads inside the tiger reserve or if you take a gypsy the nocturnal wildlife gets disturbed the mating patterns differ and conservation doesn't happen no mating no conservation so um so with this approach what we did was we brought all tourists at a farm location at a deep sky observation site we put our motorized telescope over there and we asked them to just lie down on the floor and watch the sky move and then we kept curating that event by telling them that this is that constellation this is the significance of it and then this is how it looks from the telescope and things like that it was pretty interesting for them um what it also meant was uh, we didn't have to touch anything in the tribal uh, habitat so melga tiger reserve has a lot of korku tribals and uh, there is no electricity yet there so they are not exposed to mobile networks yet like they know what a mobile is they know the latest bollywood songs but they don't use mobiles they don't have television sets and they don't have a piped water supply either so there's no western toilet over there uh they practice dry toilets or recently they've started using indian toilets with the swachh bharat mission now how if if i combine biosocial approach with ethnic knowledge so if i were to do it in the context of an ethnic culture that is korku culture in this case what we did was we renamed the event like this first event was called messier marathon uh this event was called ifil dodo so in korku language ifil means star and dodo means watching so we renamed it in the tribal language which has not been documented anywhere yet and at the same time we introduced stories from the folklore of korku on astronomy so it was ethno astronomy and we got the villagers to come and narrate that story to everybody and we told them that hey you know what the tourists are coming in for you you are not here for them so why don't you just tell about yourself and we had a lot of villagers come over and we did many of these so uh, the sukir pilta is 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 in gondi so gond gond tribe is another tribe so we did that in pench tiger reserve and um, this was done in gondi culture we got a lot of validation so we're talking about validating environments right so uh, we got a lot of handwritten feedback handwritten because there's no internet there's no technology there uh, the villagers cannot uh, they, they don't have access to um, online reviews so we got handwritten feedback from the tourists and the tourists were super happy like they wrote like two three pages of feedback each of them uh and they were they this and also we what we also did um was that we introduced the food as something that the korku tribe eats uh, when we did it in melgat so we didn't give paneer butter masala we gave them uh, like if i were to tell that in pune it, it's pitla bakri so uh, there we call it besan and uh, we did a thecha with it and we had it under the stars so it was quite a nice experience which people don't get in commercial tourism or in mass tourism so people were pretty happy about it and they paid a lot of money also uh another validation that we got was in terms of finances so uh i come from nagpur our temperatures go to up to 48 degrees in summer so there's no tourism that happens uh in summers in in the tiger reserve um but in this case we got about 50 people into uh events across two events and the summer revenue was 30000 for the first event and 45000 for the next event so everybody had that financial validation also uh what it impacted was we created an alternative to nocturnal tourism and reduce human activity uh we built the social capital by encouraging and we did this with the forest department so there was a lot of trust that was built between forest staff and the locals they were there had been conflicting because the forest staff had always been telling them that hey, you you are a criminal you you are cutting wood you are poaching tigers and you need to go from here so that trust started coming up there was an alternative livelihood that they started seeing as compared to poaching because if you can generate 30000 in one night you don't need to poach a tiger that gets you 10000 um at the same time there was minimum or no side effect to the habitat now katha ka sar ye hai ethnic knowledge coupled with biosocial interventions which is about validation and uh, emotional security for people just telling them that hey whatever you are doing is okay we we can accept it can be used for conservation and that is the theme of the project now coming back to ethnic knowledge when we say that it is represented in regional languages and dialects uh when i traveled um i i started making friends by picking up some local language gestures like hi hello kaise ho sorry 
खाना खाया क्या लाइक हाउ आर खाना खाया वी स्टार्ट डूइंग दैट सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन नागालैंड देर आर सिक्सटीन ऑफिशियल ट्राइब्स दैट द स्टेट रिकोगनाइजेस सो इफ यू वॉन्ट टू से हेलो देर आर सिक्सटीन वेज ऑफ डूइंग इट इन नागालैंड it was pretty pretty interesting and very fascinating when i was at hornbill festival in uh, nagaland uh, in the, at the same time there's there's a lot many other languages so when we start studying these language uh, uh, linguistic uh, nuances so it is called linguistic geography or dialectology now um, speaking about the linguistic spread in india uh, what we have is uh, there there is the eighth schedule of the constitution of india which recognizes official languages in india so the scheduled languages as they are called we have 22 scheduled languages in india uh what it means as every state has adopted one language which is an administrative language for that state and every curriculum or every academic material would be printed in a national language in an international language and in a regional language a scheduled language now there are 45 more languages that have been demanded to be included in the eighth schedule but we have 19500 languages and dialects in india those can be reduced to over 1300 rationalized mother tongue what that means is there are over 1300 languages that have been practiced within families and passed on through generations to each other those 1300 languages can be reduced further into 121 mainstream languages each of which is practiced by at least 10000 people in the country so right now the representation of these languages is 22 scheduled 99 unscheduled even if we were to start and every language has a lot of material mal hai usme bahut that that we can study we can derive inferences from and design a biosocial approach if we want to achieve conservation like i cannot go to a korku tribe and say that hey you know what abhi marathi mein baat kar can't do that i cannot go to a gondi tribal and i can say they, so if i were to tell you what the differences are so if i have, if i have to tell if i have to talk about gondi where i come from i, I come from gondwana nagpur falls in gondwana so um if i have to tell anybody that hey it was nice meeting you so in gondi the way you say that is um nakun nase mile masi katun khushi atun it has no connection with any language any other language that you can find khushi probably ye khushi samajh mein aaya ki bhai khushi ho gayi mereko baat karke theek hai um so the challenges that we have are these languages are underrepresented and marginalized uh there is low poor or no propagation so the only mode of propagation is spoken word uh the spoken word gets translated uh to the next generation and with every passing generation we are losing out a huge chunk of knowledge uh so it is susceptible and vulnerable to extinction we have we already have some languages that have gone extinct because all the newer generations have migrated to a, an urban landscape and they don't they have no clue about what the tribal recipes were or what the uh, agricultural practices were or how housing happened there and what is the ecology there so they have no clue so um uh, what becomes a primary um, priority for me is uh, to first document and archive this knowledge because it is undocumented they don't even have a script so th so we need to start from there now there are some ongoing projects which have which are already doing something for the rural um, uh, landscape so pari network uh, which is the people's archive for of of rural india it's already doing this within pari there is this grind mill songs project uh, which was executed in this part of maharashtra where we are right now um, in the um, western ghats uh, the villages that fall in the western ghats so um, dongri gariban chi sangathana so people poor people who live in the hills so they have a, an organization that they formed and they documented the grind mill so a grind mill is that do patthar hote hain jiske upar wo aata aata chakki jo hota hai so the women of the marginalized women of the marginalized community used to get together and they used to network and socialize over the grind mill because they were not allowed to talk about these topics at home so the only way to document gender inequality in that landscape was through those grind mill songs so there was somebody who came in and documented those songs for 20 years and they archived 110000 songs translated them in english and french and 30000 of those songs have been audio recorded and have been put up as open data on pari network um has anybody gone through this website ever 
جشن ریختہ اور ریختہ فاؤنڈیشن اوکے سو ریختہ ہیز بین انسٹرومینٹل ان کنزرویشن آف ہندوستانی لینگویجز سو اردو ہندی اودھی برج آل دیز لینگویجز دیٹ ایگزسٹیڈ ان آدی کال اور بھکتی کال سو دے دے ہیو بین ڈاکیومینٹنگ آل دیٹ لٹریچر اینڈ دے ہیو بین پوٹنگ اپ ان اے ویری گڈ یو ایکس وچ الاؤز یو ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ واٹ اٹ مینس لائک ان دس کیس دس دس غزل از 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 فرام امیر خسرو وچ واز اے فورٹین سینچری پوئٹ ہی از آلسو نون آف دا فادر آف غزلس قوالیز اینڈ روبائی سو ہی واز ہاف ہاف ہندو اینڈ ہاف پرشین سو ہی ہی روٹ ان پرشین اردو اودھی برج ایوری تھنگ سو دس پرٹیکولر غزل ہیز اے ویری یونیک کیریکٹر دا فرسٹ تھری ورڈس آر ان پرشین اینڈ دا لاسٹ فور ورڈس آر ان اودھی سو اٹ گوز ذہال مسکین مخن تغافل دورائے نینا بنائے بتیا کتاب ہجرا ندارم ہے جو نہ لی ہو کاہے لگائے چھتیا سو اٹس ہاف ہندی اور ساؤنڈس لائک ہندی اینڈ ہاف آف اٹ ساؤنڈس لائک ایلین اٹس پرشین رائٹ وچ از وچ از واٹ برنگز اس ٹو پروجیکٹ لینگڈن واٹ اٹ از اباؤٹ ناؤ آئی ول اسٹاپ ٹاکنگ جبریش اینڈ آئی کم ٹو دا پوائنٹ پروجیکٹ لینگڈن از اباؤٹ فور تھنگس دیٹ آئی انٹین ٹو اچیو ون از ڈاکیومینٹیشن اینڈ آرکائی واٹ آئی جسٹ اسپوک اباؤٹ um um how that is done uh, how that can be done so documentation can be done with a web app uh, like rekhta uh, which the, whose primary function would be to transliterate and translate so in this case when you see zihale miskin and you see a hindi devnagari script and be- beneath that you see the meaning of it so the hindi script and the urdu script is the transliteration and the uh, meaning of it is the translation um archiving is is about knowledge representation how do i represent it digitally how do i store it in a particular format that can be used to derive inferences out of it like wh- why do i want to document it i need to answer that question do i need to do it just because i want to sound cool or uh, is it for entertainment or for my ego boost i need to answer these questions so i need to do it to infer that knowledge so the way i did a biosocial intervention in melgar tiger reserve i need to understand what a star means in korku that inference is present in that ethnic knowledge which is undocumented which needs to be archived and there needs to be a system because there is so much over such overwhelming amount of information out there 19500 languages and dialects out there with a lot of literature a lot of meaning a lot of knowledge inside it how do i do it manually i can't do it manually so i need to put up a system for inferences and then based on those inferences i need to recommend a biosocial intervention to public bodies to private bodies or to organizations that lie like the garib dongri dongri garib lokanchi sangathana so if i were to provide them with a biosocial intervention i can recommend it to them that hey you know what if mass tourism is not working for you try night sky observation for that there needs to be a holistic knowledge that needs to be documented somewhere where i i intersect ecology astronomy ethnic knowledge linguistic geography and it becomes an intersectional approach it's not a single issue activism that i'm doing where i say that okay i want to conserve habitat and everybody else needs to just go away so i cannot be an environmental activist and ignore human aspect of it so it has to be an intersectional the the venn diagrams converge uh, they they intersect they don't converge so i need to take an intersectional approach and then ultimately my aim is to conserve so chronology samjhiye uh اس میں جو بیسک ٹیکنالوجی کا ایویلویشن تھا وہ ہو چکا ہے اینڈ رائٹ ناؤ آئی ایم ایٹ اے اسٹیج ویئر آئی ایم ورکنگ آن دا ڈاکیومینٹیشن اینڈ آرکائی پارٹ ویئر آئی ایم ورکنگ آن دا نالج ریپرزینٹیشن بٹ آف اٹ ریختہ ہیز کریکٹ دا یو ایکس لائک نو بڈی ایلس سو آئی ایم ناٹ ایون تھنکنگ ٹوائس اباؤٹ ری ڈوئنگ اٹ آئی مائٹ جسٹ کنیکٹ ود دیم اینڈ انڈرسٹینڈ اف دیر از اے کولیبریشن اپارچونیٹی وچ آئی ہیو آلریڈی انیشیٹیڈ ود سم بڈی uh if that doesn't happen i would like for them to open source their ux uh and so that we can use and share it anyway it's a it's a it's a foundation and they they promote open sharing so uh, uh so that is a sense that i have and um if they are not doing react probably i'll do react uh, just because i want to so anyway um the next stage would be to create come up with an inference engine which comes which which churns out some inferences out of that knowledge like what what is it what what is something valuable that is in our context right now so if zihale miskin was written in the 14th century what does it have for us right now why is it important for us or why should i even read it so there needs to be something in it for us 
so the systems need to churn out that relatable inferences for that we need to train it uh, and finally there's a recommendation engine which churns out recommendations for a biosocial intervention my purpose is biosocial intervention but it can be used for anything else also like it can be used to to create a business model which is connected with the ethnic knowledge um coming back uh, coming to the tech aspect of it probably you would smile uh, now um so uh, i needed something for ui development i needed something um, uh, to have like this is a basic web app requirement like it's it's nothing fancy uh, like this is if even if you have to build a web app it would be something like this like you'll have you'll need something to log in user sign up users forgot password email bhejo ye karo wo karo adrak lesson theek hai so um, then you need something to persist that data when i'm representing that knowledge i need something to persist that data in a way that it can be inferred and recommended then i need something for a role based authorization uh, mechanism where because i'll have some contributors i'll have some moderators i'll have some admins so i need a role based authorization mechanism somewhere where i define privileges either based on a group identity or based on karma rating or based on reputation the way it happens on stack overflow or wherever else um then uh, i'll need something to test can't forget that uh and finally i need something for uh, continuous integration and continuous delivery later stage requirements would be inference and recommendation engine uh, that is something which which connects the like it's the is the crux of this uh, this thing uh, which so serves the purpose of conservation and um, uh, if i were to open it up i'll need a developer experience like i'll need a cli experience or something which uh, people can just clone the repository and start contributing so this is something which i started thinking about uh, earlier this year uh, we are still in the second month so it's still early this year uh, and uh, i started working on the software aspect of it uh, early in february like first of february i started working on this uh, my evaluation parameters were um, um, how is the learning curve uh, how much documentation is available what sort of supporting libraries are available what is the library ecosystem around it uh, what is the developer adoption so that if i have to do it with other people uh, how do i uh, select the technology i need more developers i need community support and i need to balance simplicity versus convenience so just realize uh, everything that is simple is not easy simple is not easy uh, most simple things are very difficult to achieve so but in in the uh, in that that whatever that that feeling of achieving simplicity and feeling god uh i might just lose out on convenience so i need to balance it out somewhere i cannot just you know behen nahi ja sakta na usme all right um this was a question that i wanted to answer because i have primarily been in the view camp uh, i i always developed in view js i i never did react so i thought okay why not let let's just go for an adventure with this uh, but um where react one was uh, on the documentation and supporting libraries and the you know community and adoption bit so it sort of fulfilled most of this view is getting there now uh, uh, when i started on view there was not much happening on view uh, but right now i see a lot of traction there so anyway i i went with react just because buzzword compliance also serverless uh, so uh, you know i just wanted to sound cool uh, this is what the technology stack looks like for ui development i picked a uh, semantic ui uh, for react um and there is uh, this ui component explorer called storybook js uh, pretty awesome uh, stuff uh for user authentication i relied on aws cognito user pools i wanted to build a cloud native application i wanted to build a serverless uh, setup so uh, i did uh, aws cognito user pools uh, for the sign up and uh, login flows for data persistence i went with uh, aws dynamo db and graphql interfacing uh, uh because we we all know that javascript is winning ground in most areas right now so i wanted to stay closer uh, to that so i didn't want to uh, deviate very far away from it uh, so data persistence with graphql uh, allows us direct connectivity with react or vue or any other front end framework uh, without needing a rest api in between so it it just removes that overhead of having a crud api um, uh, which is which can be easily fulfilled with graphql there are use cases where a rest api is required so it is not a drop in replacement for rest apis but for most of my use cases i saw graphql serve the purpose for role based authorization i use something called user pools cognito user pools and there is something called graphql transform so is there anybody who has done graphql in this in this room okay 
um uh, so i have some slides on the on the tech stack uh, at a later stage i don't know if i'd be able to cover it right now but they'll be available for your reference uh, on asgeek site and it's 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 all public domain material maine bhi kahin se to tape aaya ho theek hai so uh, for testing i use jest uh, for javascript testing uh for ci um uh, i i went with aws amplify console um if uh, people who are not aware of what continuous integration is you push to a git git branch and automatically a build triggers and you have this nice app deployed for you waiting for you to test it out so you don't have to actually deploy it manually and the reason i'm sharing these aspects with you is because if you are a front end developer and want to explore full stack development if you are a server coder but if you want to explore ui development if you are a database administrator and if you want to de explore api development so there are these easier tools that are available where you can manage this without writing much code so the initial entry barrier goes away um okay a uh, graph data persistence because i i need a um, uh, inference engine and recommendation engine uh, there is something called a graph database uh, uh, who all are familiar with this term a graph database okay so um, uh, a graph database is something that what it sounds like like it's a database that stores data in the form of a graph how many people come from um, computer science background like you know okay so graph theory boring topic hai na fail hote hote bach gaye the so uh, that is applied somewhere uh, for data persistence and all those shortest path traveling salesman yaad hai kuch bayesian uh, kya byzantine agreement ha ha border gateway protocol wagera ye sab jo tha na paper mein likha tha jo etiquette laga hoga so uh, all that is is implemented somewhere and it is available for real life use like real world to so solve real world problems aisa hi faltu mein nahi tha wo uh and the querying interface for it the way we write sql queries uh for uh, relational databases uh the gra graph querying interface there are many i use gremlin and sparkle uh, or sparkle it's called sparkle uh ui ux inspiration of course uh rekhta um i might um uh, collaborate with them or uh, ask them for permission to use their ux uh, and develop something on the same lines now uh coming to knowledge representation so i'm not going to talk about the nitty gritties of how i set this up it's there in the slides you can go and refer and you can knock your socks off okay um knowledge representation um because there is so much knowledge that is there and i need a way to represent it knowledge representation uh happens to be uh, an ai concept where um, uh, you represent knowledge in a way that computers and machines can assess it and infer something out of it we have a challenge that we have so many scripts written scripts so it needs to accommodate for that there is this uh, uh transliteration and translation example that i wanted to quote uh so there is this uh, devnagari script that is written on your um, right there is a transliteration of it in english script in the english alphabet and at the bottom there is a translation of it now uh, i'll skip this part um now how do knowledge graphs look like so फूल जो शब्द है हिंदी का दैट ट्रांसलेट्स टू फ्लावर इन इंग्लिश एंड इट ट्रांसलेटरेट्स टू पी एच डबल ओ एल इन इंग्लिश स्क्रिप्ट इन द इंग्लिश अल्फाबेट सो यू कैन रिप्रेजेंट दैट एज अ ग्राफ एंड देन यू कैन एड सम मेटा इन्फॉर्मेशन एंड से दैट इट्स अ हिंदी वर्ड दिस इज एन इंग्लिश वर्ड एंड दैट्स एन इंग्लिश वर्ड एंड फ्लावर ऑल्सो ट्रांसलेटरेट्स टू हिंदी हिंदी न्यूज पेपर पढ़ते हो कभी तो दिखेगा ये एंड देन यू कैन हैव डायरेक्शंस translation is bidirectional transliteration is unidirectional and then you can have like a cycle within that graph where you have multiple translations in the same languages these are labeled property graphs it's a specific type of a graph where uh, you label it that you say that all these are nouns so you can have a vocabulary of verbs you can have a vocabulary of adjectives you can have a vocabulary of any other grammatical uh, construct Now, how do you create these graphs? You create these in Gremlin. This is the syntax. I'll skip this for the benefit of time. Uh, you just do an add vertex, add edge. So, what these nodes, full, push, flower, these are nodes and or vertices of the graph, and the things that connect are the edges. So, you create an edge, you create a vertice, a vertex, and then you connect it. So, there's a very simple syntax that you follow. Uh, this is how it looks like. 
it's got an ID and it's got some labeled content to it. And when I start adding edges, it looks like this. Now, what is this useful for? So it's useful for tra traversal. So what does Flower translate to? So it gives me a list of vertices. Now, I, it's not human readable. So what I do is I say that give me the content of it. So I say what does Flower translate to? It tells me push for full. Then if I say what does pull translate to? So it says push for flower. Then I say what does pull translate to in English? So you can go as granular as you want and you can have a translation and transliteration mechanism set up using a graph database with a simple graph query. And all this is all this can be executed using lambda functions while being in your JavaScript comfort zone. So you don't have to move away from it. You just have to write it somewhere and you, you can trigger it from a Node.js uh, application also. So AppSync, which is a GraphQL engine, it supports integration of Lambda functions and you can connect various data stores with it. It doesn't, ha it doesn't it does not have to be only DynamoDB. It can be a graph store. It can be a key value store. Uh, like uh, it can be a memory store like Radius and so on. So LPG works. Uh, LPG is not the subsidy wala LPG. It's, it's labeled property graphs. So it uh, it works great for travel search and it's a candidate for OLTP systems where a transaction is important, online transaction processing. So uh, I want a quick translation of something, I'll do a traversal. Now what is the other aspect of it? So there is something called semantic graphs where uh, I, I say that a, a, a grammar can be represented in graph like ASTs, like an abstract syntax tree. So tree is a special case of graph. So you can actually represent the language in a, a graph and construct a sentence out of it. So this is a ghazal by uh, another by Amir Khusro. It says, Phool rahi sarso sakal ban, tesu phule ambua bore, gori karat singar malaniya, garwale aai gharso sakal ban. So uh, what it means is, tesu uh, is palash, uh, katri, uska phool aara hai, aam ko bhi bore aara hai, mango is blossoming, tesu is phool, uh, is flowering, and sarso bhi aari hai usi samay. Aur kahan aari hai, to jangal mein aari hai. So uh, I picked this example because it, it connects ecology also. Like if I were to study climate change, I can say that, okay, Palas has stopped blooming right now. It used to bloom in the 14th century. So climate change is real, something like that. Uh, then I can also add some information and say that it's a noun. In the LPG, you saw that it was noun was represented as a label. There is no label here. Then I can make it further complex and I can say that Ambua, Tesu, Sakalban, Sarso come from Hindi language. Then I can say Hindi comes, Hindi is also a noun and Hindi comes from English language, this script that I, that I've written and English is also a noun and it comes from English language. So there's a self-reference. Okay. So this is a complex graph. If you can, if you compare this with the LPG that we saw, this is a more complex graph and it is used to answer more complex questions. कि आज के सीजन में सकलबन में क्या-क्या होता है जंगल में कौन सा मंगल होता है ठीक है सो सो आई हैव टू कट इट शॉर्ट बिकॉज़ देयर इज नो टाइम थैंक यू सो मच फॉर बीइंग पेशेंट वन इंपॉर्टेंट स्लाइड not really. I mean, I've covered most of it under Abariya. Thank you.